Hello, welcome to Brown Bag History for February 16th, 2022. Today we'll be talking about Isabel Patricia Corsier, Revelstoke ski legend. As we begin, we acknowledge the land, traditions, and culture of four nations the Zagrebmek, the Tanaha, the Snikes, the Okanagan Nation Alliance, or Silks. We acknowledge our use and inhabitation of this land sacred to these four nations. We respectfully honor their traditions and culture. So Isabel Corsier was really a remarkable athlete. Uh, she's really what you'd call a, a, an extreme athlete and long before that term was ever used. We're talking about her now in February of uh, 2022, because 100 years ago on February 7th, she became the world's women's ski jumping champion. And um, with a, a jump on Mount Revelstoke, she was just uh, still a teenager when she did that and um, really was, was known for, for that feat. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about her life and uh, her family. So uh, she was a born to a pioneer family. Uh, her father, yeah, was Henry Noble Cursier, and he's the one who's in the, the back right of this photograph. Uh, he came to, was born in Ontario in 1861, and um, he attended business college at Toronto, and then came to British Columbia via San Francisco and Victoria in 1882. He took a position as a timekeeper with Andrew Onderdonk, who had the contract for building the Canadian Pacific Railway from the coast westward. Uh, Corsier then uh, joined uh, with the, did, did some mining in the Similkameen, lived in Kamloops for a short period, and then conducted um, a store at Eagle Pass Landing, which is now Sycamus. And um, he was in Revelstoke as early as 1885, but he didn't settle here until about 1888. And he eventually took over and ran uh, a uh, general store here. Uh, you can see on this photograph of Front Street around 1910, there is his general store just right of center, H.N. Corsier, general merchant. He married uh, Isabella Steed of Cremor, Ontario in 1890. And um, she was born in 1865. And when she joined her husband in Revelstoke, she worked at his store as a milliner, which is a hat maker. She was also a talented artist in oils and watercolors and taught China painting as well. We have some of her paintings in Revelstoke uh, Museum, uh, particularly uh, we have one on display right now in our Mount Revelstoke exhibit that she did about in the early 1900s, because uh, she did a lot of hiking on Mount Revelstoke as well. Um, she was also the first woman on the Revelstoke School Board. Their family home was uh, on Front Street, built in 1902. Uh, people tended to name their homes back then. They called named their house Ballynahinch, after the town in Ireland that the family had come from originally. And um, it was at... Uh, 1211 Front Street, which is where River's Edge Apartment is now. So they had a big property there, beautiful gardens. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Corsier was a talented gardener as well. And she was also involved in Revelstoke's first parks board and was responsible for some of the gardens at what is now Queen Elizabeth uh, Park. Um, their uh, house was a uh, uh, burned down by firefighters to clear it in 1967, back in the days when the fire department would uh, burn down a derelict house in order to uh, get uh, practice for their volunteer firefighters. Uh, so that was in uh, 1967. Henry Corsier died on uh, January 10th, 1938. And uh, Mount Corsier and Corsier Creek on Mount Revelstoke and Corsier Lake, uh, which is south of town, were all named after him. Um, Mrs. Corsier died in August 1931. 
there uh, they had uh, they did have uh, five children. Four of them uh, grew to adulthood. Uh, the front um, left is Eric Clarence, born in 1891. He became a civil engineer and moved to Saskatchewan. Uh, bottom right is uh, Heber Leon, he was born in 1893, became a dentist and uh, spent most of his life uh, career in Vernon and died there in 1989. The back is Olga, born in 1895. Uh, she became a school teacher and uh, died in Vancouver in 1974. She never married. Uh, there was a, another son uh, in between, who was born in 1903. His name was Lancelot, or nicknamed Dooley. And uh, he unfortunately died in 1909 and drowned in the Columbia River, which was right um, outside of their, their yard. Um, and uh, Isabel uh, Patricia, who's in the center of the photograph, was uh, born March 21st, 1906. And uh, her mother was referred to uh, oh, formerly Isabella, but also known as Isabel. So uh, Isabel, the ju junior, um, is known by most people as Isabel, but in later years, she started using her middle name, Patricia or Pat. So a lot of her friends and colleagues knew her as Pat. So uh, Isabel received her first pair of skis when she was eight years old. They were given to her by Bob Blackmore, who was a neighbor of theirs on Front Street and a well-known river boatman. Uh, in 1919, she participated in the local ski competition. She was in the boys and girls ski run with no poles for children 13 years and uh, over. Uh, she, or and under, sorry, she came in fourth with 19 points. She also participated in the girls distance race, half mile, and came in second in one minute and 43 seconds. So what really brought her into prominence in uh, skiing circles happened a hundred years ago on just over a hundred years ago on February 7th, 1922. And it was just a month and a half before her 16th birthday. So she was 15 years old when she did this. She participated in the boys class D jump on Mount Revelstoke and came in third with 108.5 points and a jump of 84 feet. This made her the women's world champion ski jumper. Women jumpers weren't really encouraged. Uh, they, and uh, so her feat was really considered groundbreaking. At the same competition, Isabel Corsier came first in the ladies ski run and first in the pony ski race, also known as ski joring, where the skier is pulled behind a horse. This sport was later banned from local competitions because it was too dangerous. And here's a 15 year old uh, doing it. Uh, she talked about uh, ski joring. Uh, she said that um, we had a horse, buckskin, the color of a chamois. We used to ski jor behind him. That was fun. We had the horse's collar on the trace and the traces. And then I had a rope from the traces back to hang on to. Then I had to extend the reins long enough with the rope to go. And the horse never ran away. He never panicked. But if he didn't watch and keep the traces firm, he'd stop and take a look back to see who he lost. And I had to watch that the points of the skis didn't run into him when he was waiting, standing. I had to be ready to slide off to the side if something happened. And that was fun. They had ski during races here on Mackenzie Avenue, which you can see in this photograph from Victoria and finishing at the fire hall. So they'd start at Victoria Road, go up through first and second, and then the fire hall was just around the corner on second street. And she said they'd have two at a time going. And Isabel Corsier is on the left and she won that race in 1922. Um, she participated in other sports too. She uh, was, uh, especially in track and field uh, in that same, that summer, July 5th or uh, July 1st of 1922, the YMCA had a sports day for Dominion Day. 
and Isabel came first in the 100 yard dash for girls 14 and over. Uh, she also took place in the 1923 skirt ski tournament in Revelstoke and was awarded a silver cup for winning the Class C Ladies Race presented by Revelstoke Insurance Agencies. And she was also presented with a gold medal by the Revelstoke Ski Club in appreciation of the skill and daring displayed by the only lady ski jumper in North America. Also that year, she uh, participated in the Nacusp Ski Tournament in February of 1923, along with a lot of other Revelstoke uh, skiers, including Nels Nelson, of course, our, uh, he was the really well-known, um, eventually world's record holder from Revelstoke. Um, but she made quite a splash at the Nacusp uh, Ski Tournament. The newspaper there said, Miss Isabel Corsier, the 16-year-old girl wonder with a record of 75 feet and the seven-year-old mar marvel Gunnar Gunnarsson, also of Revelstoke, who made 72 feet, were idolized by the big crowd present. And at that competition, Isabel won a special prize in the boys class B jumping contest. Of course, they had to fit her in with the boys contests because they didn't have a girls uh, category. And um, also in 1923, the Mount Rainier National Park in Washington State held a ski tournament, surprisingly enough, in July. But they were doing it high enough on Mount Rainier that they were able to access the snow. And Nels Nelson of Revelstoke was asked to, to go there and build the course. And um, Isabel, um, was invited as well. And, and um, there was a note in the Tacoma Star newspaper in June of 1923, said in the field this year, competing with men and boys will be pretty 16 year old Isabel Corsier, a girl who made a jump of what of uh, at the March tournament in Revelstoke. And they're saying it's 100 feet, but I haven't been able to confirm that. This course here will also take place in the five mile ski race of July 3rd. And another uh, Tacoma newspaper um, after the event uh, from July 5th, 1923, said that uh, lovers of the snow sport who had witnessed many contests received an extra thrill when Miss Isabel Corsier, popular 17-year-old world champion girl ski jumper of Revelstoke, contested with the men. Every eye followed the girl as she spit down the course through the air her distance, however, was only about 80 feet. Doesn't sound too bad to me. As in both jumps, she fell. Miss Corsier received the girls' awards as she was the only feminine contestant. She had two contestants in the gliding contest. And gliding was downhill skiing. Uh, also a note from the uh, Revelstoke newspaper in July of 1923, said Mrs. Corsier and Miss Isabel Corsier returned from Mount Rainier National Park, Tacoma, Washington last week, where they had been attending the big ski tournament and where Miss Corsier attracted considerable attention as the only lady ski jumper in attendance. She captured a sterling silver candlestick for the ladies ski run and a silver cup for ski jumping. And it um, was mentioned that President Harding, the president of the United States at the time, was the among, among the spectators of her daring feat. She also participated in the 1924 ski tournament in Revelstoke, but the uh, newspaper marked, mentioned that there wasn't a lot of snow that year and uh, the snow was, was quite uh, icy. So they said the hill was too fast and treacherous to make any world records that year. Uh, but that mentioned that Miss Isabel Corsier, Revelstoke's popular performer, was a star in her beautiful and skillful glides and leaps. And she, she came in second in the ladies open ski run, which is distance racing, and she won an umbrella. They would quite often give uh, practical gifts as well as uh, trophies and medals. There was an editorial in the uh, um, publication called Sporting Life of Philadelphia 
uh, praising 16-year-old Miss Town, who is the US world's uh, women's ski jumping champion. Uh, they claimed that in the world, no other wisp of a girl essays such feats of daring. And then there was an editorial in the Revelstoke paper that begged to differ. They said, great though the American prodigy may be, she was outclassed by Miss Isabel Corsier, a Canadian of Revelstoke, BC, and uh, went on to outline some of Isabel's uh, uh, accomplishments as a ski jumper and the fact that she was the world's record holder. Uh, there was another article in a uh, Edinburgh, Scotland uh, publication uh, from uh, uh, 1925 uh, by a man named Sir, Sir Charles Piers, who had attended the 1924 ski tournament in Revelstoke. And uh, he said, not only is Miss Corsier a fine jumper, but she is also a most graceful one. And to see her neat figure clad entirely in dark blue knickers, stockings and sweater coat with a soft knitted cap worked with the club colors coming gliding down the run perfectly balanced after a flying leap through the air and a landing on a seemingly impossible slope was a sight worth coming far to see and this um, got a few photographs in this presentation of some of the medals that were awarded to Isabel, and she actually donated them to the museum during her lifetime. So this was a first prize medal in a ladies jump that was awarded to Isabel at the Revelstoke Ski Tournament in uh, 1925. And of course, she came first in the ladies jump because she was the only lady, only woman who was uh, participating. So. Isabel really made a name for herself on, on an even bigger stage in on December 30th, 1925, when she gave an exhibition of her skill on the jump of the Frontenac Winter Sports Club at Quebec. It's called the Côte de Neige jump. And um, it said the occasion was the International Intercollegiate Ski Competition. And uh, Isabel was still in her teens at the time. The, newspaper account of that said that she was a member of the famous Revelstoke Ski Club, which has produced so many celebrated ski jumpers. Uh, she made an unofficial jump of 103 feet and came third in distance with 12 men competing, but her jumps were considered exhibition jumps. She did win a gold medal uh, engraved from the Frontenac Winter Sports Committee, and she donated that one to the museum as well. Uh, she was noted as the first woman to go over the Côte de Neige jump. Uh, she was interviewed at the museum here in the 1970s, and she said, they knew I'd been doing all kinds of jumping here, and they had a smaller jump there for practice, and I practiced on it to get used to it. Well, then I finally decided I was ready for the big one. And just after I'd come down, held the hill all the way, then the committee member that was there came over and shook hands and said, you're the first woman we've allowed over the jump. There was an article written in the Calgary Herald in February of 1927 by a writer, Elizabeth Bailey Price. And uh, it was all about Isabel Corsier. And she mentioned that Isabel had made practice jumps of 101 and 103 feet. But she said, like most of the children of Revelstoke, of whom it is said, out of the cradle onto skis, she has been indulging in her favorite sport ever since she could toddle. She is the only girl there who's been known to take the running test downhill skiing alone, as it is the custom of the glider girls who enter these contests to come down the slide, supported by the strongest men skiers. So, Glider girls were women who would do downhill slope skiing, but they would um, be supported by a man while they were doing it. At some point, we had thought that glider girls were women who went over the jumps with a na another man, but I, I believe that it was rather than that, they were actually doing the downhill skiing, um, but they, they weren't expected to do it on their own. 
except of course for for Isabel, that uh, very fierce athlete who was not going to let anything stop her from doing what she considered uh, an appropriate sport for her. It also mentioned that uh, she was the only girl who had dared the uh, pony ski race or ski joring. The author Elizabeth Bailey Price goes on to say, fearless and graceful, like some well-poised bird, she came down the boy's hill. As she reached the takeoff, she swooped suddenly and swiftly into the air, curved to the earth, and glided speedily down the remainder of the hill to the deadline. She said, meeting and talking to her, I found her youth. She is barely 20 now. Fresh beauty, modesty, and seriousness, very attractive. Her unbobbed hair, except for the stray natural curls tucked under her brightly colored toque. Her rosy cheeks and dark blue eyes were enhanced by her navy blue outing suit. She was well and gracefully formed. I learned from everyone around how popular she was, how proud the townspeople were of her, and what a good student she was. From her, I learned too, that she was enthusiastic about all kinds of sport, that when she finished high school, it was her ambition to take all the training necessary for a physical culture teacher. And at the time of uh, this article, she was already enrolled in uh, her second year at McGill University in Montreal, where she was taking a, a two-year course. Uh, she was uh, studying all sports and athletics, uh, track, track work, tennis, field, and ice hockey, basketball, baseball, and pretty well, any, any sport that they offered, uh, including and gymnastics as well. She was uh, making records in, in school sports. She uh, had, we have two medals from McGill that uh, she earned there. I've got uh, just one of them on display here. This was a um, second place in the senior baseball throw she had a throw of 170 feet. And in the javelin throw, she um, made a distance of 76 feet, 10 inches. So she was a really all round athlete. At the uh, class uh, track meet the previous fall uh, before this article was written, um, she had uh, came in second place for, for the whole track meet. Uh, in our collection, we also have a Royal Life Saving Society Award of Merit that was presented to Isabel in 1926. I don't know the circumstances around that, but that was one of the pieces that she also earned. In um, September of uh, 1927, it uh, was noticed, noted in the paper that she had uh, taken a position at uh, the normal school in Victoria where she was to be employed as the physical instructress. Normal school was teacher's training school. So she was going there to teach teachers how to teach uh, physical education. That was, that was her, her field. And uh, so that was really for a very young woman who had just graduated from university. That was a really a prestigious job that she was given. Um, the article said that always taking a keen interest in athletics since childhood, she entered the School of Physical and Health Education at McGill University, where she had a most successful career, being one of a class of 21 to graduate last May. As the class at McGill is limited to 50 each year, only the physically fit are admitted. And it said Miss Corsier is the only graduate from BC this year. And her appointment to Victoria is the result of hard work and close application to duty. In um, 1929, she managed to get leave from her position to participate in the ski tournament in uh, Revelstoke. It said it, it was several years since Miss Corsier appeared at a local tournament and some little time since she did regular jumping. She, however, was just as daring as ever and did even better than during her previous exhibitions. She also did exhibition jumps at Grouse Mountain in 1929 and received a Hudson's Bay Trophy there. 
there was an interesting note in the newspaper in uh, February 6, 1931. And it said, the headline said, this thrill exceeds ski jumping. Isabel was uh, unable to come to Revelstoke for the tournament that year, but she went with a friend to Gross Mountain. And the newspaper said, parking the car, the girls put on their skis and were transferring their belongings to the ski camp when a huge black bear emerged from the forest and made a flying charge for the girls landing on Miss Corsair with all four feet at once and burying her to the ground, meanwhile tearing at some food supplies, which she held in her arms, hunger no doubt making the creature desperate. Some boys drove the animal off with ski poles, and fortunately no injury was inflicted. But Miss Corsair reports she got the biggest surprise of her life and a much greater thrill than she had ever experienced over the big jump at Revelstoke. Th this photograph and the next one were taken on Mount Revelstoke around 1935 when Isabel was back visiting at home. And um, you can see that she's, she's dressed in kind of a masculine way. Uh, she very much had her own style, though she was wearing a man's suit and, and hat. Um, this photograph and the next one are from the collection of uh, Marjorie English Meyer, who uh, grew up in Revelstoke. She was actually my husband's aunt. And the English children lived not too far from the Corsairs, and they all had jobs at one point helping Mrs. Corsair, particularly maintaining her large garden and yards. So Isabel took uh, Marge and a friend to the top of for a drive to the top of Mount Revelstoke when she was visiting that this one year. In um, 1931, Isabel was promoted to the Vancouver Normal School as the physical directress. And she'd also been attending summer school at Berkeley University in California. In uh, that same month, she came out to Revelstoke for a visit and was a speaker at the Revelstoke Rotary Club. She talked about trends in physical education. She said there was a swing away from formal exercises to games, developing more freedom of movement generally. And she also emphasized the social side of physical education and the importance of knowledge of swimming and life saving. And she commended the Rotary Club for the work that they were doing to improve Williamson's Lake and to uh, sponsor swimming and diving lessons at, at the lake. And, and she did make it back to Revelstoke for the uh, 1938 competition, but didn't perform that year. Isabel also took nurses training at uh, Vancouver General Hospital. And uh, then she uh, went to Scotland in 1938 and uh, both did both teaching and hospital work in uh, in Scotland for several years. She did come back to Canada around 1951 and uh, taught originally in Vernon. Her niece Joan, daughter of Isabel's brother Leon of Vernon, said that Isabel was really ahead of her time. She taught children to use ribbons and hoops in gymnastics exercises something that you see at gymnastics competitions now, but it was really unheard of in Canada at that time. So she was bringing new techniques and ideas to her work. She taught in um, schools as a physical education teacher in Nanaimo and Qualicum Beach Senior Secondary. And she went back and forth between Canada and Scotland until she uh, finally retired in 1967 and returned to Canada. She lived on Vancouver Island, including Parksville in Victoria before moving to Penticton. She was interviewed by an author, uh, Mildred Kurtz in Parksville, BC uh, in a publication uh, there around 1968. And uh, she told the interviewer, we did not go in for expensive equipment in those days and went on to say that parents couldn't afford the fancy gear that seems to be standard today. She said, I am appalled at the commercialism youngsters are exposed to these days. 
and very sorry for parents who are trying to keep up with the wants of growing families who want to take part in winter sports. She didn't see the need for expensive ski toes and lifts to reach the slopes and said it was much better for the skiers to walk up themselves and then ski down. She said she blamed many ski accidents on the fact that muscles weren't conditioned and warmed up when the skier rides up the hill and just glides down in what she called a monotonous cycle. She was also a, an accomplished artist like her mother before her and also like her niece, Joan Lansdale of Penticton. And I really want to thank Joan for providing a lot of these photographs that we uh, have of uh, Isabel. Until recently, we didn't have too many and now we've got really a nice collection of photographs. In one of her times back in Scotland, Isabel attended the Jordan Hill School of Art in Glasgow. As well as painting, she made beautiful hooked rugs. Shortly before her death, she was interviewed by Heather Glebe in the publication called Okanagan Sunday. And the article was published on October 21st, 1990, which was actually just a few days after Isabel had passed away. But Isabel said that Revelstoke was a kid's paradise in winter. She said there were plenty of hills right at her back door. At dusk, the arc lights would come on and the kids would ski until bedtime. We learned on homemade skis. Some skied on barrel staves. And if you didn't have skis, you used to bum slide. The old folks thought that term was too vulgar. So we changed it to rump skiing and that became rumpty skiing. We used to make our own jumps out of school snow saying that they would use the bank behind the courthouse. Corsier said that she was advised to bind her ankles for strength and protection, but she never bothered. I was careful. I wouldn't try it unless I was sure I could do it. I played it on the safe side, even if I lost distance. I learned to fall so as not to make a shell hole. There are far more people killed or maimed in downhill or slalom. And uh, she said, you know, I never got a sprain. My knees and ankles have never given me any trouble to this day. She said that she began on single groove homemade skis. Said the best we had were two groove skis then. We had to have good balance to adjust ourselves. The skis were kept outside to match the temperature of the snow. Otherwise, they'd stick like glue. We took care of them in the old, old way. Sandpaper the bottoms, then apply white shellac, then ordinary parawax. It worked. And Isabel skied as late as the 1980s on Big White and did cross-country skiing as well. Isabel Patricia Corsier died on October 16, 1990 in Penticton at the age of 84. There are currently plans underway uh, through uh, Arts Revelstoke to have a sculpture of Isabel Corsier made and displayed somewhere in downtown Revelstoke. I certainly think it would be really appropriate to honor this outstanding athlete from Revelstoke uh, who really was groundbreaking in her time. Uh, and at this point, I'd also like to mention that if you're following the Beijing Winter Olympics, you will have heard that the Canadian mixed ski jumping team uh, won the bronze medal in the Olympic debut of the mixed team event. This was the first Olympic ski jumping medal for North America since the Olympic Winter Games at Chamonix, France in 1924. And one of the, the people who was really responsible for women being allowed to ski jump at the Winter Olympics again, uh, uh, finally, was Zoya Lynch, who is a current uh, Revelstoke resident for the last uh, more than 10 years. As a, a child, she started training as a ski jumper at the age of eight, at Canada's Olympic Park in Calgary. At the age of 11, she was at the men's jumping event at the Salt Lake City Olympics was it holding up a sign that said, girls want to jump too, let us in 2006. And of course that didn't happen. She was named to the Canadian national uh, ski jumping team when she was 15. And she and fellow uh, female ski jumpers challenged the Vancouver Olympic Committee in front of the BC Supreme Court, arguing that excluding their sport discriminated against women. 
the judge ruled that since the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, um, fell outside the jurisdiction of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, there was little that the Vancouver Olympic Committee could do. It wasn't until April of 2011 that the IOC announced that it would include women's ski jumping at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. Still, they were allowed only to jump on the smaller of the two Olympic jumps. That decision came too late for Zoya Lynch, who had retired from the sport at the age of 18, but an, another uh, groundbreaking woman athlete. So uh, 100 years later, uh, we really acknowledge and honor the accomplishments of Isabel Corsier. Thank you for joining us today.